Hello, my name is Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to 3D asset texturing in Instamat Studio with layering. Now, this video is a slower introduction to Instamat's layering project and the many concepts around it. If you're just interested in hitting the ground running, go ahead and check out our faster paced video on our YouTube channel. You can check it out now with the link in the description below. Now, what is layering? Instamat's layering lets you create stunning textures for your assets with a delightfully intuitive and creative workflow by applying materials like textures one layer at a time, like coats of paint. Now, layering is procedural and non-destructive, meaning that while we build up our layer stack, we can also create a procedural project that can be applied to entire classes of assets. There's so much to explore, so let's get started. To texture an asset with layering, we can create a new project and choose layering. From here, we can give our project a name and decide the type of project we'd like to create. We can choose the project type based on the way the asset is configured. Multi-material projects allow you to work on the asset based on the available material sections or texture sets defined for the asset. If the asset is set up for multiple UDIMs, we can set up the layering project for a UDIM workflow here. Multi-material unified projects bring the UDIM workflow to multi-material based assets. This allows us to apply layers and painting across material sections without having to work with them individually. In this example, we are going to use the high poly to low poly workflow and use Instamat's bakers to transfer the details from the high poly model, also known as the source mesh, onto the low poly model, known as the target. We can supply the target mesh here and enable the Bake Mesh Upon Creation toggle to tell Instamat to begin the mesh baking process after creating the project. Instamat offers a built-in tutorial that allows you to dive into layering with a pre-built project. It's a great way to explore many layering features. In the tutorial, there are disabled layers and effects that you can toggle to discover and play around with. Instamat also lets you create layering projects with your own custom templates. In this case, we're going to continue creating our project by clicking Create a Project Without a Template. Now we are presented with the Mesh Baking panel. From here, we can supply the high poly source mesh and choose the resolution for the baked texture maps. It is recommended to choose the resolution that you'll be mainly working in. For this example, our asset will be viewed at 2K resolution. Instamat's bakers are now extracting the information from the high poly source mesh and baking it into texture maps. These maps not only allow us to represent more detail on a model with less geometry, but also provide Instamat with more information about the physical characteristics of the model. Attributes like the curvature, thickness, and world position of the mesh can be used to quickly apply realistic effects such as edge wear or weathering. Here we are presented with Instamat Studio's layering interface. The large viewport is front and center where we can navigate around the asset in a physically lit 3D environment. To learn how to navigate an area in Instamat Studio, click on the area and the status bar at the bottom will show the associated keyboard shortcuts. On the left, we have the layering project editor with settings for the channels, mesh, and material sections for the project. On the right, we have the layer stack and the layer editor. The layer stack is where we create and manage layers for the project. The layer editor underneath provides settings and parameters for the selected layer. To add a new layer, click the New Layer button below the layer stack. Layering projects can contain an assortment of layer types. Each type provides a unique approach to texturing an asset. Multi-channel layers provide complete control over the channels for each layer. Like materials, layers contain multiple channels that each represent a particular property when visualizing an asset. These channels include aspects like the color, roughness, and height information. With multi-channel layers, we can provide specific information for each of these properties with either a solid color or value, image, or a graph resource like an element or atom. Let's briefly cover what atoms and elements are. You can think of atoms and elements as the building blocks of Instamat. An atom is an image processing program that runs on the GPU. Many of the nodes you find in the graph library are atoms, such as the blend node or the Perlin noise. 
atoms can be built using the atom graph project type and are special because they contain a control flow system to determine the flow of the graph, enabling complex operations like branching or looping. Atoms contain customizable parameters, making them infinitely reusable when used in other project types, like a layering project or an element graph. If you'd like to learn more about creating atoms, you can take a look at our Getting Started with Atom Graphs video on our YouTube channel. In Instamat, when you combine multiple atoms together, you get an element. The element graph is the fundamental graph of Instamat Studio. Elements can work with many types of data, such as images, meshes, and point clouds, and each of these data types can be combined together into one graph. An element can be a full PBR material, or an entire mesh processing workflow used to perform tasks such as polygon optimization, UV unwrapping, and texture baking with technology from Instalot. You can even create procedural geometry and entire 3D assets in an element graph. To learn more about element graphs, you can take a look at our Getting Started with Material Creation in the Canvas video on our YouTube channel. Now let's get back to the different layer types in a layering project. Element layers make it easy to map the outputs of an element to the different channels of a layer. This makes it easy to quickly apply a material or procedural texture like a grunge, noise, or pattern to the asset. With the Layer Element Settings panel, an element's exposed parameters become available to make quick adjustments. To remap the outputs of an element to different layer channels, we can use the Layer Channels panel. Multi-channel brushes and element brushes utilize Instamat's procedural 3D painting engine. With multi-channel brushes, we can paint directly on the mesh with multiple channels at a time. And like element layers, element brushes allow us to paint entire materials directly onto the mesh. Let's begin texturing this sci-fi crate by applying some materials. Instamat Studio comes with a built-in library of hundreds of high-quality procedural materials. We can find these materials in the graph library, and we can access it by clicking on the element icon on the left. To apply a material onto an asset, simply drag the material from the graph library and drop it onto the submesh you would like to texture. To fill the entire active material section with the material, drag it directly into the layer stack. Now that we have our base metal material, let's add a coat of paint by creating a new multi-channel layer. From the layer editor, we can pick a green color from the color widget under the base color channel. Let's also create a red paint layer. To duplicate a layer, right click it and choose duplicate or use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control D. We can keep the layer stack organized by grouping materials together. We can do this by selecting the two layers and clicking Add New Layer Group or by using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control G. In order to distinguish where our layers appear on an asset, we can use masks. Instamat Studio has a large selection of intelligent masks that utilize the baked mesh maps we created earlier. To create a red accent color along the bottom of the crate, let's use a mesh volume mask. To add a mask, select a layer and click the Add Mask button below the layer stack. The Mesh Volume Mask makes any layer visible within the specified volume. We can use the viewport gizmos to manipulate the volume in 3D space. To quickly switch between the Translate, Rotate, and Scale gizmos, we can use the W, E, and R keys. Pressing F focuses the viewport so that the camera re-centers on either the active gizmo or any meshes in the scene. Layering gives you the freedom to explore and experiment with powerful generators, filters, and effects that can be applied to a single layer or an entire layer group. For example, to try out different color variations of our paint, we can add an HSL filter to control the hue, saturation, and luminance of our paint group. To toggle the visibility of a layer, mask, or effect, we can use the X in the layer stack. Let's add some edgeware to apply a roughed up look to the crate. Notice how we can apply the Mesh Edgeware Mask to the entire paint group to affect all the layers inside. The Mesh Edgeware Mask takes advantage of the Baked Curvature Map to quickly apply natural looking scratches and wear to the edges and cavities of the mesh. By increasing the height value of the green paint, we can bring out the look of the edgeware.
we can visualize the influence of a single layer or mask in the viewport by soloing it. To solo a layer, right-click it and choose Solo Layer Output in Viewport, or use the S key. Let's add another layer of rusted metal to the handles and clasps of the crate. We can use the Mesh Mask to target specific pieces of our mesh. We can pick specific parts of our mesh in the viewport, or use the Mesh Render Filter to dynamically apply the mask using wildcards. In this case, any sub-mesh that has the word metal in its name will be masked so that the greasy iron material is applied. This is one of the most powerful masks in Instamat Studio, and it's one of the many ways to make it so that this layering project can texture an entire class of assets. To finish up our crate, let's add some smart prefab layer materials to quickly add some natural dirt and grime. Smart prefab layer materials are saved layer stacks that combine all the layers, masks, and effects into a reusable material that you can easily apply to other projects. To use a smart prefab layer material, drag it from the graph library into the layer stack. All of the included parts of the layer stack are brought in and unfold directly in our project, where we can then tweak them and make specific adjustments. Now that the asset has been textured, let's go over a few ways that we can reuse this layering project to texture multiple assets. One way is by saving our entire layer stack as a smart prefab layer material. We can do this by grouping all of our layers together, right-clicking, and choosing Add to Library as Prefab Material. This will add the prefab material to the machine's user library, making it accessible to use in future projects from the Graph Library panel. We can then drag our prefab material into the layer stack of another project, and due to its procedural nature, it will intelligently apply its contents to other assets. Another way to reuse layering projects is through the Package Management panel. The Package Management panel can be found on the left by clicking on the Package icon and displays all the associated projects and resources in the package, including images, meshes, and baked mesh maps. We can bring the contents of one layering project into another by simply dragging it into the layer stack of another layering project. The contents of the project will unfold and adjustments can be made to all the subsequent layers, masks, and effects. A third way to reuse a layering project is by instancing it through an element layer. This will represent the entire layer stack as a single layer. To instance a layering project through an element layer, click the Add New Layer button and choose Element Layer. We can search through Instamat's built-in library, the user library, or the current package, and choose the layering project to instantiate. By instancing a layering project this way, Instamat Studio is able to link the two projects together. This means that any changes made to the original project will automatically be reflected in any projects that reference it. And layering projects can be integrated with other Instamat Studio projects as well. By dragging a layering project into an element graph, we can extend its procedural capabilities even further with the node-based features of the canvas. This allows us to create comprehensive workflows that perform multiple steps on an asset, such as UV unwrapping, mesh baking, and texturing, all from within one graph. And by exposing meshes as graph inputs, all we need to do is change the input mesh, and the graph can then be reused to process and texture entire classes of assets. Layering projects provide an artist-friendly approach to procedurally texturing your 3D assets. And as you can see with layering in Instamat Studio, there's so much to uncover. But there's even more to explore with layering, and to give you a quick peek, I wanted to mention decals. Decals let you project images and even full PBR materials onto the surface of a mesh. By changing the projection mode of a layer in the Layer Projection panel, we can use the viewport gizmos to position the decal into place but there's an even easier way to place decals with the decal picker. With the picker, all we need to do is click on the mesh and the decal will snap into place. Then, by using F to focus, we can use the viewport gizmos to make any necessary fine-tuned adjustments. To learn more about layering and other Instamat project types like the Element Graph, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here we have an ever-expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. 
Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.